Hello everybody and welcome back to Gotham Lounge. My name is Joe, and today we're back out with another episode of Fallout 4. So, you guys are probably wondering what this huge contraption is in the middle of Sanctuary. So basically, what I ended up doing off camera was, I was actually required to actually build this thing from the ground up. And it required so many materials and so much work, so many side missions off camera that I did. Well, maybe not side missions, but like miscellaneous type of stuff where I had to clear areas out. Which is very uh, tedious, but I finally have enough supplies to build this. So let's go ahead and talk to Sturgis, because he is going to power us up into the Institute. Let's head up. Let's do this. You sure? Okay. Your part is simple. Just step onto the platform. I'll start scanning for an Institute signal to lock onto. Then... I fire her up, and we see what happens. All right. Just Can I get on the platform. Step right in. Do the rest. All right. I'm not actually okay. Moving. Hold real still. I don't want any corruption of the molecular beam. By the way, I figured this was a golden opportunity to find out as much as we can about the Institute and what they're up to. Yeah, it, this holotape's all set with a program that will scan their network and download anything it finds. Uh-oh. Uh, yeah, we better hurry. They don't worry about that tubing wiggling around. It's, uh, just there for decoration. Okay. Scanning for the Institute signal. Tracking RF. And got it. Hold on to your butt. Well, uh, I just got a trophy, the molecular level. We're here, guys. We're in the institute. Interesting. This actually would be a good opportunity Where is the holotape? Oh, this one. I think it's the network scanner. Ah, here we go. Awesome. Okay. So now we can bring that back to stir just when we get back. Or if we get back. Oh, I gotta be careful of what I take. Because I don't have cards worth with me. Now what do we do? Give holotape to Sturgis. Started institutionalized. Alright, you know, I'm actually going to go unarmed. Well, not my, don't want to have my fists out. <laughs> Alright. I can only tell <coughs> you what you've heard, what you think of us. I'd like to show you that you may have the wrong impression. 
We'll see about that. Welcome to the Institute. This is the reality of the Institute. This place, these people, the work we do. For over a hundred years, we've dedicated ourselves to humanity's survival. Decades of research, countless experiments and trials, a shared vision of how science can help shape the future. It has never been easy. And our actions are often misinterpreted by those above ground. Someday, perhaps, we can show them what we've accomplished. But for now, we must remain underground. There's too oh, much underground. to risk it all. As you've seen, things above are not stable. I'd like to talk to you about what we can do for everyone. But that can wait. You are here for a specific, very personal reason. You are here for your son. I don't even know where we're going. So I've been in multiple elevators already. Whoa! Is that... Sean? Sean? Huh? Yes, I'm Sean. Is it really you? Is that really you? Who are you? I'm your dad. Sean, it's me. I'm... I'm your dad. Father! What's going on? What's happening? Sean, are you okay? You're not hurt, are you? What's going on? Father? Father! Shh, shh, it'll be okay, Sean. I'm here now. I don't know you. Go away. Father! Father, help me! There's someone here, help me! Who is Father? Where is he? Father? Father, help me! He's trying to take me! Father? Father, help me! Can we talk some more? Sean. S923, recall code Cirrus. What the? Fascinating, but disappointing. The child's responses were not at all what I anticipated. He's a synth? We're only just now beginning to explore the effects of extreme emotional stimuli. Please try and keep an open mind. I recognize that you are emotional, and that your journey here has been fraught with challenges. Let's start anew. I am Father. Welcome to the Institute. This is insane. This is insane. All of it! The degree of trauma you're experiencing right now is understandable. Please, just try to relax. I know this is all difficult to take in. Help me understand. Just... Help me understand what's going on here. I promised answers, and answers you shall have. But I need you to realize that this situation is far more complicated than you could have imagined. You have traveled very far, and suffered a great deal to find your son. Well, your tenacity and dedication have been rewarded. It's good to finally meet you, after all this time. It's me. I am Sean. I am... What? Your son. How is that possible? Is that even possible? I know this is a lot to take in. In the vault, you had no concept of the passage of time. You were released from your pod and went searching for the son you'd lost. But then you learned that your son was no longer an infant, but a ten-year-old boy. You believed that ten years had passed. 
Is it really so hard to accept that it was not 10, but 60 years? That is the reality, and here I am. Raised by the Institute, and now its leader. But why? Why? Why take a child? Why take you? Ah, now that's the question, isn't it? Why me? At that time, the year 2227, the Institute had made great strides in synth production. But it was never enough. Scientific curiosity and the goal of perfection drove them ever onward. What they wanted was the perfect machine. So they followed the best example thus far. The human being. Walking, talking, fully articulate, capable of anything. They need specimens? So the weird science experiments needed specimens. That's why they took you. In a manner of speaking, yes. The Institute endeavored to create synthetic organics. The most logical starting point, of course, was human DNA. Plenty of that was available, of course. But it had all become corrupted. In this wasteland, radiation affected everyone. Even in their attempts to shield themselves from the world above, members of the Institute have been exposed. Another source was necessary. But then the Institute found me after discovering records from Vault 111. An infant, frozen in time, protected from the radiation-induced mutations that had crept into every other human cell in the Commonwealth. I was exactly what they needed. And so it was my DNA that became the basis of the synthetic organics used to create every human-like synth you see today. I am their father. Through science, we are family. The synths, me, and you. Here the whole time? You, you've been down here the whole time? I have, yes. I know you must have questions. Please. Anything I can do to help you understand. So, what's the deal with Kellogg? He worked for you? Kellogg. He was an Institute asset long before I arrived here. It wasn't until I became director that I learned of all the things he'd done. What kind of man he was. You used him? You knew the man was a psychopath, but you used him anyway? <laughs> I don't expect you to understand or agree with the decision. The Institute took advantage of Kellogg's vicious nature. I will freely admit that. Institute technology prolonged his life, and his usefulness far beyond any normal human lifespan. He never failed the Institute. But his cruelty became more apparent with every completed objective. I won't lie. It's no coincidence your path crossed his. It seemed a fitting way to allow you... us... to have some amount of revenge. What else can I say to ease your mind? How about your mother? Your mother? She never got to see you grow up? Yeah. What happened to her was... I've gone over the records of the incident, of course. It seems her death was an unfortunate bit of collateral damage. It was brutal. You don't remember? You didn't see it the way I did. It was brutal. Yes, I'm sure it was. Sadly, the world has become a brutal, unforgiving place. For many years, I never questioned who my parents were. I accepted my situation, and that was that. With old age comes regret. And asking what if, more often, God. What matters now is that you and I have a chance to begin again. What else can I say to ease your mind? 
How about the whole institute? So you're in charge of the institute? I am the acting director, yes. I spent decades working to reach this point. It's a responsibility I take very seriously. The institute. It's important. It really is humanity's best hope for the future. No matter what those above ground might think of us. Hmm. I'll go with, uh, I need your help. They need your help, Sean. It's rough up there, to say the least. Oh, we've tried that. Surprise. The Institute once tried to help create a stabilized Commonwealth government. It ended in bickering, infighting. It was a disaster. No. We look after our own now. Ultimately, the Commonwealth has nothing to fear from us. Whatever you've seen or heard, I know I can convince you of that. Just give me time. I know there's more for us to discuss. But the Institute is on the verge of some important breakthroughs. Your presence would be appreciated as we approach them. I've been a part of something amazing here. I've helped to build a life for myself and the people of the Institute. And now, after all these years, you have an opportunity to help with that. Doesn't that intrigue you? Isn't that what you want? I'm gonna go with maybe, because I'm still torn between so many different parties at this point. Maybe. I, I don't know. This is so much to take in. I know. And I am sorry. You have been through so much in such a short time. The Institute can provide a better life than anything above the world. You've been in the Commonwealth. You've seen what it's like. I assure you that you are better off with us. I don't know. I don't know what to do. I realize that. It's why I'm trying to help you. I hope that you can see that rationally. The Institute is the only thing left in the world that is worth being part of. I simply ask that you give the Institute, me, a chance. A chance to show you what I've been telling you. We really do have humanity's best interest at heart. Will you take that chance? I still don't know. That's not really telling me anything. I just don't know. Just. Give it time. Give the Institute a chance. The Institute is now your home as much as it is mine. Please take some time, get to know it. Meet the people you'll be working with. You want to introduce yourself to the division heads. Dr. Fillmore in facilities. Dr. Ao in SRB. And Dr. Holdren in Bioscience. And finally, Dr. Lee in Advanced Systems. They've all been notified of your arrival, of course. Meet them, and then we'll discuss what comes next. Well, this was quite a interesting turn of events. I thought this was Sean, but he is a synth. This is actually Sean. Father, in other terms. We gotta have some good stuff here. Alright, but let's, uh... Scope around. Try and meet some other people at the Institute. I have no idea where everybody is. This looks like somebody's room. Yep, same thing in there. It's an here we go. You, sir. Thank you. Still don't know what to make of everything yet. Here's one of the doctors. Just need to tighten up this primary drive, sir. Excuse me, doctor. That's the third primary drive breakdown this month. They weren't kidding. We really are here. Well, all right. I'm Alan. Alan Fillmore. You can think of me as the Institute's chief engineer. 
When Father told us about you, I could hardly believe it. You've been through so much, I think most people would have just given up. If you don't mind my asking, what was it that kept you going all that time? To literally find my son. I just wanted to find my son and keep him safe. Now that you've found him, I hope you're proud of the great man he grew up to be. Now, I'll give you a quick rundown of the facilities division, and then I'll answer any questions you might have afterward. As you might guess, we keep the Institute's mechanical and electrical systems running smoothly. We maintain and upgrade all of the systems that make it possible to live and work in a place like this. There's a lot of machinery behind these walls that recycles the air and water and provides power to the laboratories and quarters. The work we do might not be as exciting as some of the other departments, but it's at least as important. So, now that you're here and you've spoken to Father, does that mean you're on board? I'm just looking around. I see. Well, please do mind what you touch. Sensitive equipment here. Not like Topside. If there's anything else you'd like to know about the facilities division, I'm happy to discuss it. Alright, well, who built all of this? <laughs> this place, originally. Has it been here long? The construction of the Institute is the work of generations of scientists. The original survivors of the war, our progenitors, took refuge in the basement of the old Commonwealth Institute of Technology. Over time, their sons and daughters dug deeper into the earth and built increasingly sophisticated habitats and laboratories. It's a process that's still going on today. Even now, we're digging out tunnels for new facilities and infrastructure. Just think what this place will look like a hundred years from now. I hope I'm there to see it. I don't know. Most of them have lasted Fillmore. long past their projected lifespans. You ask me. It must be How do you keep this thing running? Of a place like this. Absolutely. We scratch and scrape for every precious ounce of voltage that we can. Over the years, we've learned a few tricks that help supplement our power budget. When necessary, we can tap into select sources on the surface. We take only what we need, of course. Fortunately, Advanced Systems is always working on new solutions to generate more energy. It's a good thing, too, because the demand is always increasing. <laughs> you don't even want to know what a single use of the molecular dematerializer consumes. I can't argue with that. Allie. There we go. Hey, all what set. do you mean? Unit, you can uh, how about the personnel? Like about the people in your division. Of course. Dr. Lawrence Higgs is our mechanical engineer. He oversees the major life support and security systems. Power distribution is Dr. Evan Watson's area of expertise. And Dr. Newton Oberly is in charge of food and housing. He coordinates with Bioscience to ensure that our meals are balanced for optimal nutrition. We also make use of a number of synth units for low priority maintenance and labor. Alright. Of course. We're That's all I have for now. Uh now where do we go? It must make you proud to see all that follow you down. There's another doctor right here. Well, through these doors. SRB. Well, I imagine they're going to be consuming so much power if they're going to continue to dig, dig, dig all through these tunnels. It sounds like this is like another whole vault. Doctor, so, here you are. Justin Ayo, Acting Director of the Synth Retention Bureau. I'll be up front with you. We're going to be keeping a close eye on you for the near future. Despite your relation to father, you're a bit of an unknown quantity. I'm sure you understand. There won't be any issues, will there? I'll say no issues for now. Be on the good side. Now, father has asked that I provide you with a brief overview of the synth potential. Our primary responsibility is the recovery of escaped synths that are hiding among the human population on the surface. Um, that sounds like the opposite of what the railroad's doing. Why would synths want to escape? Synths do not want. They might look like human beings, but they're machines. As to why they're escaping, that matter is currently under investigation. Our main instrument is the Courser, a third-generation synth assigned to operate on the surface. Coursers hunt down and reclaim synths that have escaped the Institute. They are highly self-sufficient, trained in combat, infiltration, and tracking. In a word, Courses are horrendous. But I gather you know all this, since you've been telling me. 
In fact, I'd very much like to know how you defeated it. Literally, it was combat experience. No stranger to combat. Even so, a courser should be more than a match for any single combatant. I suppose I'll have to ask robotics to perform detailed diagnostics on the entire production line. Now, unless you need something else, I'll get back to work. Uh, reclamation process. I'd like to know more about the synth reclamation process. Fine. Once a courser has located a rogue synth, it uses that synth's recall code to wipe its memories and render it in there. We then begin the delicate process of restoring the neural pathways to their original configuration. In those cases where the procedure is successful, the synth returns to duty with no memory of its time on the surface. All too often, we're unable to repair the damage and are forced to dispose of the unit entirely. Dr. Ayo. What do you want? And please, make it quick. Well, you don't have to stamp your feet at me. If you're the acting head of the ESRB, who are you filling in for? Dr. Zimmer holds that position. He's supervising the retrieval of some of the more high-profile units. In his absence, I keep things running smoothly. Always Justin. vigilant. Yes, we what do you mean? We have many enemies. You mentioned that coursers undergo special training. Tell me more about it. The SRB constantly monitors our Gen 3 synth population, looking for specific traits. Those who show tenacity, fearlessness, and independence undergo a rigorous training regimen. We teach them armed and unarmed combat, investigative techniques, psychology, and mechanical skills. Those who pass a final evaluation become courses. The rest have their memories wiped and return to their former duties. Oh, clearly. Escapes more seriously. Clearly, this guy was in a huge rush to not talk to me. I don't think I need any of these. You smell like you've been above ground. Because I have been above ground. All right, what do you guys think so far? Do you think the Institute's really uh, doing this for the greater good, or are they just, uh... Is this all just a cover-up scheme? I honestly have no idea what to think at this point. Alright, let's head into the advanced systems. Alright, so we have a doctor in here. He is through these doors. Or she. Excuse me, doctor? Ah, it's you. You're here then. Yes, yes, I know who you are. We all do. While I'm sure Father is very happy that you're here, I do hope it doesn't interrupt our work. I won't get in your way. I promise I won't get in your way. Thank you, I do appreciate that. Oh, before I forget, let me see that pit boy of yours. I've been told to install a courser chip in it for you. Father's orders. You're to be given full access, with the ability to relay in and out of the Institute oh. at will. Sure, I'll take it. Thank you. Uh, I'm sure that'll come in handy. Given that the relay is the only way to access the Institute, handy is something of an understatement. In case the significance is lost on you, you'll be the only one here with that kind of access. If nothing else, it should demonstrate the amount of trust Father has placed in you. Now, unless there's something else, I really do need to get back to work. Uh, how about the progress I'd report? I'd like a progress report on your division, if you don't mind. Taking your new appointment in stride, I see. Very well. We've shifted resources off of other projects, like the Child Synth, to focus on Phase 3. I'm hoping that the above-ground efforts are successful. I understand those depend heavily on you. We're not done here. Dr. Lee. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Tell me about the people in your division. I'm not sure what there is to say. Dr. Watson is the Specialist Project's lead scientist. He's, um, how to put it, uh, very organized and precise. Dr. Ormond is one of the youngest scientists in the Institute, and she's something of a prodigy when it comes to physics. Dr. Lee. 
Is everything okay, Dr. Lee? You seem pretty tense. Yes, things are... It's fine. I'm sorry. I don't socialize much. I prefer to focus on my work. Alright, I will leave you to it. One day, I'll design more efficient reactor to replace that old pump room. I don't know, guys. To be honest, the two uh, heads of these divisions I spoke to did not seem like they really were happy with my presence here. Let's check the last one. This is the bioscience division. And then we'll go from there. Alright, where is... Not yet. I've been reviewing Father's plans to expand Here's the doctor. doctor. I wonder how the Warwick family So good to have you here. Dr. Clayton Holder, to ten years head of the bioscience division. I can't wait for you to see the work we're doing. It's truly amazing. I look forward to learning more about it. In that case, let me give you a brief overview of what we do here. As the name implies, the Bioscience Division specializes in fields of study such as botany, genetics, and medicine. Our most important directive is to ensure the health and well-being of everyone in the Institute. To that end, we cultivate highly specialized breeds of flora for use in food and medicine. We've even started to explore the idea of synthetic animal life. You probably saw the gorillas. They're really just a pet project at this point, but the potential is exciting nonetheless. It's pretty cool. There's nothing you guys can't do. With hard work and ingenuity, any challenge can be overcome. I'm sure I've taken up enough of your time as it is. But I have to ask, have you decided whether you'll join us? Would I fit in? I'm an outsider. Would there even be a place for me here? Even if science isn't your passion, there are plenty of ways to contribute. Our projects sometimes require an agent who can work on the surface to observe and gather information. From what I've heard, you are both fearless and resourceful. I think you'd be ideal for that kind of role. In any case, I imagine you'll want to continue looking around. Or, if you prefer, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Nice got a trophy! Institutionalized. Um, I'll say need any help. Anything I can do to help out? I think Dr. Carlin was looking for help with one of his experiments. You should talk to him. All right. So I've learned quite a bit about the Institute. And it seems like, yeah, they're just another variation of an underground vault. I really don't know still how I feel about these guys. Alright, how do I get back up to where I just was? Oh, here we go. Excuse me, I got reports I'm gonna go up another flight of stairs. All right, let's talk to Father. Now that you've had a chance to see the Institute firsthand, what do you think? I'll say it's amazing. There's technology here that I never dreamed possible. It's amazing. I'm glad you can appreciate what we've accomplished. None of it has been easy. Ultimately, all our knowledge and resources are focused on a single goal. The goal is best summarized by our model. Mankind. Redefined. Unfortunately, no advancement comes without occasional setbacks. As remarkable as our synths are, they can be... dangerous without proper supervision. The superior synth mind and body attempting to wrestle with something approaching free will can be a recipe for chaos. Say if free will. If are intelligent and self-aware, then they have a right to free will. However closely they may approximate human behavior, they are still our creations. When you see what I have to show you, 
I think you'll agree that we know what is best for our sins. A rogue synth has taken over the Raider Gang at Libertalia. His memories have been erased, and his identity altered. He believes he's a man named Gabriel. Under his leadership, the Raiders have taken many innocent lives. I've dispatched a courser to Libertalia. I'd like you to join him and reclaim that synth. Alright, we'll uh, try and bring the synth home. That would be best for everyone. Now you should get moving. Many people are in danger, and a delay could cost lives. Alright, uh... I have no idea how to get back to the surface. Let me talk to him. Sean. Libertalia isn't hard to find. Just look for the jumble of wrecked ships floating in the harbor. You should get going. There's no time to waste. I'm trying to get back to the surface. Alrighty, guys. I think... Can I fast travel out of here? Oh, okay. It's just the easiest fast traveling out. Alrighty, guys. So this episode definitely was a lot to take in about the Institute. So on that note, I'm going to go ahead and actually end the episode right here. So thank you guys very much for tuning in today for this episode of Fallout 4 here on Gotham Lounge. If you guys enjoyed the video, please go ahead and leave a thumbs up on the video, and feel free to leave a comment down below as always. If you'd like to continue to stay in touch with us, watching future videos or videos of our past, just go ahead and hit the subscribe button on the lower right-hand corner of the screen, and you'll get a bell notification every time I upload a brand new video. So once again, guys, thank you very much for tuning in today for this episode of Fallout 4 here on Gotham Lounge, and you guys have a fantastic day!